Hey everybody, just uh, give me an update on the Solidoodle 3 3D printer. I'm uh, doing some uh, overhaul on it. I had been thinking about getting a new printer and I talked to Lowell Spot about getting a mini and ended up not going that route. Um, even a refurbished one was going to cost a thousand bucks and I was going to have to switch to 3mm filament. I've always used 1.75. I have 1.75 around so I figured I would just stick with what I had and do some upgrades. And uh, luckily I was already going down that path because I, uh, I had the hot end go bad a couple weeks ago. Uh, my print quality just, just kind of went to trash and I tweaked settings and I tried, I, I, I tried cleaning it, I tried, I tried lost things and nothing worked. And I got doing some research online and it looks like a lot of people um, have had problems with the solid doodle uh, hot ends from the factory. And I think I got this thing in 2013. Uh, so technology's come quite a ways in these uh, smaller end uh, 3D printers. So I decided I was going to do an upgrade to an E3D uh, hot end, uh, the version 6. And I hemmed and hawed about doing it, and uh, then when the hot end went bad, I went online to order it. And just so happens, the day I went to order, they had launched a new product called the E3D Titan, Titan Arrow. Um, it's an extruder hot end combo unit. Um, so I did the upgrade to that. Well, I decided to buy it to do the upgrade, and now I'm mid-upgrade. Um, it's turned out to be a bit more of a challenge. Um, I'll show you some, some reasons why here in a second. Um, but the good news is it's forcing me to kind of overhaul the whole uh, Solid Doodle 3, um, and hopefully have a much better printer in the end, be able to do more quality prints, um, have to spend less time tweaking things um, in the settings to get it to print real well. So I'm going to cut and go over here and show you some details of, of the, uh, the Titan Arrow Extruder. So here is the Titan 3 Arrow um, Extruder Assembly. Um, I've already assembled the whole thing. Um, I had to add my own stepper motor to the back as a NEMA 17. Um, there's a little PTFE liner here for uh, the 1.75 filament. Um, got this nice machined aluminum uh, heat sink on the front on the cold end. Uh, comes with the fan. The hot ends here underneath this little silicone sock. The actual hot end is the same as what they use on the regular E3D V6. Um, got the heater cartridge and the thermistor cartridge here. Um, and then I actually purchased the the bracket here um, pre-printed since my printer was already down. Um, I bought that pre-printed when I bought the kit. Um, and then wedged in between here this black section is an ABS section, injection molded, um, that houses the gears for the actual extruder. There's lots of videos, I'll, I'll uh, link below to an E3D video or put a card up above one or the other to the E3D video about this. You can see about the extruder itself. I want to talk about some of the challenges of actually using it though. The kit went together pretty easy, uh, it was pretty self-explanatory, they had directions online that were easy to follow. Um, I did have to make my own little spacer between the, the idler arm and the um, aluminum heat sink. Um, they, made, they put a little plastic one in there and my shaft and my NEMA motor wasn't long enough so the stepper motor shaft didn't go in far enough to have that rest on there. So I pressed in a, a little pin and actually used an, an O-ring um, to do that. A um, little, little bit of work, but actually I actually think it'll be better than what the original setup was. But other than that, it went right together. Everything seemed to go together fine. Here's where I ran into my challenge though. On the solid doodle at least, this sits on top of the X carriage. Well, the distance between the bottom of this plate and the bottom of the hot end tip is 21 millimeters. That's not very much space. My factory carriage wouldn't work. So, it forced me to do an upgrade. So. What I'm doing is I'm upgrading to, I'm gonna grab one from behind the camera. Uh, I'm upgrading to new, let's see if I can get these in the camera without moving it, new eight millimeter polished shafts. Um, got those off Amazon, they're pretty cheap. And then rather than the factory bronze bushings, switch into uh, linear roller bearings. Um, again, these are pretty cheap on Amazon for a set of them. Uh, but what it did force me to have to do is rebuild all the carriers uh, for both the X and Y axes. 
So that, that's been a bit of a challenge. And because of that 21 millimeter distance between the, the tip here and the, the plate, I, I had to get something very, very minimal. So what I'm using, I'm gonna bring the camera around here. What I'm gonna use is this aluminum plate that I drilled the holes in already. It's sitting upside down, so there'll be two bearings on that side, two bearings on the other side, um, on that other groove there, and then um, flip it over and it'll mount to the base of the, the arrow and it'll uh, slide back and forth on the x-axis that way. So, not the ideal setup. Um, well, I, I shouldn't say not the ideal. Not not the simplest, just you know, plug and play setup. But it's it's going to ultimately make it, I think, a lot better 3D printer. Um, and I hear really good things about these E3D. Uh, there's the box for the E3D Titan Arrow. Um, so yeah, everything everything was in the kit except for the NEMA motor, uh, the uh, NEMA 17 stepper, and uh, it all went together fairly easy. Uh, if I would have just sat down and done it, it probably would take me about an hour to put together uh, following the instructions. So, yeah, that's going to go back in. Everything's going to stay in the factory locations on the Solidoodle. So it'll go, um, the, I'll use the factory holes for the linear rails. You can see I already have one slid through there for the Y. Um, I'll use all that. It'll be the same, using the same motors for all that. Um, same belt setup, same everything. Um, just making this one upgrade. Well, uh, on that, and then I'm going to redo the enclosure slightly uh, because I just think I can do a little cleaner enclosure. And I'm upgrading to a to a new 12 volt um, power supply. I have. Let's see if I can show you the one I have in the back here. the The factory power supply in these solid doodles was a little bit. Eh, hopefully, I'm not getting too dizzy. Uh, was a little bit inadequate. It's just that brick back there. I have it sitting in a container because I have my spools of filament up on a rack I made. Um, so I, I'm upgrading from that to, again, trying to get sick here as I pan around. Upgrading to a you know more conventional power supply unit that I'm going to mount on the back there. Uh, but other than that, it'll stay the same. This is the original X carriage here with all 3D printed components on the ends. Uh, part of the problem was is they glue these rods into these ends and they're near impossible to get apart. So I'm just, I'm just opting to build all new stuff. Um, and being the 3D printers down, I'm having to make mine uh, using the mill and drill press and uh, you know, not being able to just 3D print the parts. But luckily I have access all that stuff in the shop so um, yeah this is going to be a more extensive upgrade than I intended but ultimately should make for better prints um, you can see here some of the parts that we printed fairly recently it, it was doing good prints right up till it stopped doing good prints um, although even these I don't think are quite the quality that I was getting a few months you know a, a couple years ago I think that quality has diminished some so this should make for a lot, lot nicer quality. So uh, I'll update you again here, hopefully next week actually, on on the final upgrades and showing the machine in action. I really hope to have it going uh, here in the next couple of days.